Rubella, also known as German measles, is a contagious, mild viral infection which mostly affects children and young adults. In today's session, we are going to cover the epidemiology of rubella, followed by understanding the agent host and environment factors which favor the spread of rubella, looking at a condition known as congenital rubella syndrome, also known as CRS, and finally, the preventive strategies, including vaccination. So let's begin with how many people are affected with this disease worldwide. Around 1,10,000 children are affected by the condition congenital rubella syndrome. And I have been mentioning this because this is a most serious complication which occurs because of rubella. Now if we look at the distinction between developing world and the developed world, practically there are no cases of CRS in the developed world. And this can be attributed to the excellent immunization strategies and the coverage with the rubella vaccine. However, in the developing world, there are lots of cases of CRS occurring because of not protected women in the pregnant age group. So that's quite important when we look at the occurrence of congenital rubella syndrome. Um, moving on to the agent, rubella is a viral infection caused by a virus belonging to the family Toga viridae. This virus has the capability to multiply in the respiratory tract. So has got the capacity to be transmitted from the infected person to a susceptible host through activities like sneezing, coughing or talking whereby the virus in the respiratory droplets can be transmitted from one person to another. And the susceptible people who can get rubella are mostly children and young adults. As I said earlier, pregnant women is a special host group which can be affected and can result in a condition known as congenital rubella syndrome in the newborn or in the infant. So pregnancy is a special condition whereby rubella can be more severe especially in the unborn infant. So that's about the host factors. Looking at the environment, as with any other respiratory infection, rubella virus can be easily transmitted in environments which are crowded centers like the daycare centers wherein children uh, will be there in large numbers and if the ventilation is not taken care of and one child is infected it can transmit the infection to several other children so this is about the epidemiological trial of rubella let's look at the symptomatology once the virus enters the respiratory tract it takes around two to three weeks for the symptoms to occur so that's the incubation period of rubella the symptoms usually are mild wherein there is mild fever and um, nausea and pain in the muscles and it is characterized by a maculopapular rash which starts on the face and slowly spreads to the entire body over a period of one to three days. Now what is a peculiar feature of rubella is what we call as post auricular lymphadenopathy. So the lymphatic glands behind the ears and around the neck are enlarged as you can see in the picture here and this is a characteristic feature of rubella. So post auricular lymphadenopathy we need to remember is pathognomonic of rubella or what we call as German measles. So this is what are the symptoms. Now what happens with the rash is that a person who has the rash of rubella can be infective for around one to five days after appearance of the rash. So if, when we talk of prevention or we talk of prevention of spread of rubella from one person to other, we need to understand that other people need to be protected from the infected person for around one to five days, maximum of a week after the rash has appeared. Because during the rash phase of the disease, the person is going to be maximally infective to others. So this is what is very important to remember from the prevention point of view. These are the symptoms of uh, rubella. We talk now about congenital rubella syndrome. So congenital rubella syndrome as the word suggests, it means that it can have a combination of several problems which the newborn can face and most commonly it is eye defects, heart disorders, um, and 
brain disorders or disorders of the nervous system which happen with congenital rubella syndrome. So the point to understand over here is this particular syndrome has a lot of morbidity and mortality associated with it. The complications of congenital rubella syndrome could be autism, diabetes or even nervous system disorders in future. So it brings along a lot of morbidity and mortality and is a serious concern to the parents who have just seen their newborn. So it's, it's quite important to realize that this syndrome brings in a lot of disability and morbidity along with it. Now the thing is pregnant women who acquire rubella during the early um, trimester of we say the early months of pregnancy have a likelihood to suffer from things like miscarriages and abortions. So it's likely that they will not give birth to a live child at the end of the normal pregnancy period. Whereas those who get infected during the mid trimesters or late pregnancy, they can have children born with congenital rubella syndrome. So that's the seriousness of this situation. Before the uh, advent of vaccination, around it was four children out of 1000 live born babies who would suffer from CRS. But fortunately, because of the vaccination coverage, what has happened is this incidence has gone down. Now let's look at the preventive strategies for rubella. We first talk about preventing rubella in childhood. So as a disease of a childhood, as a vaccine preventable disease of the childhood, rubella can be prevented by administering a dose of the vaccine which is live attenuated vaccine and it is usually given in combination with either measles where it is known as measles rubella vaccine or it can also be given in combination as measles mumps and rubella vaccine which is the most commonly used worldwide MMR vaccine and nowadays it is also given in combination with measles mumps and varicella that is the vaccine against chickenpox so it is known as MMRV vaccine so it is generally given not as a single vaccine but as a constituent vaccine combined with other vaccines and this a single dose of this vaccine at the age of 9 to 12 months as well as a booster dose at around 4 to 5 years is enough to induce an immunity of around 95 percent so and the immunity offered is similar to if the child would have been infected by the rubella virus itself. So that's about preventing rubella in childhood. Let's look at preventing the congenital rubella syndrome. So as we all have seen that pregnancy is going to be a risk factor for occurrence of CRS. So how to prevent CRS or congenital rubella syndrome? Uh, it has been proposed by the World Health Organization to immunize all girls at 12 years of age with one dose of the live attenuated vaccine of rubella and this can protect them from getting infected with the rubella virus during pregnancy and hence the occurrence of congenital rubella syndrome. So giving a single dose of rubella vaccine to the adolescent girls that is at the age of 12 years as I just said can help in minimizing the incidence of congenital rubella syndrome. But the point to understand over here is that it has to have a high coverage. Many women across countries, across the world have to be immunized in order to have protected against the congenital rubella syndrome. As other viral infections, rubella, as I said earlier, is mild. So it is self-limiting. The only care which we need to take is to manage the symptoms of the infected person and prevent other people in the family from getting infected. So prevention of uh, the other people in the family, the healthy people in the family from getting infected is by isolation of the affected individual for around a week's time after the rash has appeared and also taking care of the diet and the hydration of the person who is infected. Maintaining high levels of vaccination coverages are the strategies which are effective in protecting many children and young adults from rubella. So that's all from me about rubella. Take care, have a nice day and do subscribe. Bye.